Here's what's happening now. Winter weather advisories have been posted for tomorrow morning's commute. We'll tell you how much snow is going to be on the ground for the big drive. Karen? Two men convicted of rape and robbery face a judge. But first, they hear from the women they assaulted. Investors have been holding their breath all day as the markets are closing right now. We have closing numbers the day after a massive sell-off. Paula. So we're suiting up for cuddle duty. Yep, there's something actually called the cuddlers. Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News First at 4 starts now. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Karen Drew. This is First at 4. And get ready for a messy, messy morning tomorrow. We are looking at a winter weather advisory overnight. And the timing of the snoo new snow is just awful. Let's get right to Ben Bailey for a look ahead on what the timeline is, Ben. Yeah, if you were planning this for the worst possible time on Wednesday, Mother Nature succeeded. 3 a.m. to noon is when the advisory kicks off, but it looks like the heaviest snow is going to fall from 5 to 9 when most folks are going to be on the roads tomorrow. This does not include everybody. Genesee, Lapeer, and Sanilac are not included in the advisory. We expect those totals to be a little bit lower. But still, the snowfall timing uh, will be the same for everybody as that system moves through tomorrow morning. And as far as where it's at right now, we're seeing the clouds starting to stream in from the southwest, but the actual snow is still back here to the southwest. So again, it's going to be overnight. We probably won't see those first flakes start to fall until after midnight. So here's the bottom line. The timing of the snow overnight through lunch on Wednesday. So it looks to be about an 8 to 10 hour event. Amounts are going to be 2 to 3 inches with the highest total down in our south zone and the biggest impact of course is going to be that drive into work and school tomorrow. We'll break it down in your four zone forecast coming up in just a few minutes. Karen? All right, Ben. And speaking of the commute, when the roads get rough, our traffic reporter Kim DeGiulio and meteorologist Brandon Rue are live with the local four car cast. It's information that could help your morning drive. You can listen on Facebook and click on Detroit.com starting at 7 a.m. Breaking right now, the markets are closing and it has been a nerve wracking day from Wall Street to Main Street. The Dow was down more than 1100 points on Monday. Now let's take a look at where things stand today. The Dow up some 500 points as well as NASDAQ and the S&P 500. Now investors are worried about higher inflation and possibly higher interest rates, but the Treasury Secretary says there is no need to panic. We are very focused on the long-term economic growth, and we believe that the policies that we've enacted, including tax reform, are very positive for long-term economic growth. Now, in the past, President Trump has applauded and taken credit for the rising stock market. So far, he hasn't reacted publicly to the wild ride over the past few days. We're also learning there is a new criminal investigation connected to the Larry Nassar sex abuse scandal. Former U.S. Olympic gymnastics coach John Gaddert is now under investigation. Gaddert used to run Twist Stars. That's an elite gymnastics club in Diamond Dale. And that's also where the disgraced Dr. Nasser molested some of his victims. The Eaton County Sheriff's Office says people have come forward with complaints against Gaddert, but would not give any specific details. We are working on the story right now, and we'll have new information on Local 4 News at 5. Two men who admitted kidnapping women on bicycles in Detroit and Hamtramck and then raping and robbing them were sentenced today, one after the other. Aaron Stewart was first, but before his sentencing, he was joined by Quinton Flemons, who pleaded guilty in the same cases. The two listened as statements were read from victims condemning the men for the violent crimes they committed. May you never feel peace again in your pathetic lives. If you feel hopeless with nowhere to turn, may you be dragged down deeper. May you be denied of everything good in life. May your families forget your embarrassing names and your children never know you. Flemons was sentenced to 25 years to 50 years in prison. Stewart's sentence is for 27 to 50 years. It could be a life sentence for a life taken far too soon. The man accused of killing Detroit police officer Glenn Doss Jr. has been arraigned on new charges. 43-year-old DeCharlos Brooks is now facing a dozen charges, including first-degree murder in the officer's death. Doss was responding to a domestic violence call. When he was shot, he died days later. Brooks is facing life in prison. He'll be back in court in April. 
Well, if you were on the lodge this morning, oh, you might have seen this, a nasty pileup on the southbound side. This is video crews trying to get that road clear. It happened about 10 o'clock this morning, just past 7 Mile. Nearly 12 cars were involved. Luckily, all the cars only appeared to have some minor damage, and traffic was still able to get through. No injuries have been reported. M10, back to normal rush hour traffic tonight. President Trump is facing growing pressure this afternoon on several fronts. He's threatening to shut the government down, and there are some big questions swirling about the special counsel's Russia investigation. Devin is in the newsroom, and Devin, the clock is ticking on a yeah. few of these issues. Yeah, we've got a number of things to get to here, Karen. First, the president has five days now to decide whether he'll approve the release of new classified, uh, the, the new classified memo from the House Intelligence Committee from the Democratic side. This one is a rebuttal to the Republican memo that was released this past Friday. The Republican version, of course, very critical of the FBI and Justice Department for how they used FISA, the Federal Surveillance Program. Program. The Democratic memo contains counter arguments and the White House is reviewing the request. At the same time, still no deal now to keep the government open past this Thursday. In the past hour, in fact, President Trump threatened to shut down the government if he can't get a deal on immigration. He said in his words he'd love to see a shutdown. Uh, also, the New York Times reporting the president's attorneys are urging him to not sit down for an interview with special counsel Robert Mueller. In the past, the president says he's uh, willing, even eager, to speak with Mueller, but some Democrats say uh, that would be the right thing to do. Well, then American people need to ask, what is the president hiding? And I encourage the president to talk to the special counsel because if, in fact, the president has done nothing wrong, he would want to talk to the special counsel and try to clear everything up. Not the way that his attorneys perhaps feel about it. The official word from the president's legal team is that their negotiations with the special counsel continue, but they're referring to them as a private matter. So, Karen, if uh, Mueller were to subpoena the president, uh, that's a battle that a lot of Washington watchers believe could end up going all the way to the Supreme Court. Back right. to you. All right. Thank you very much, Devin. Well, from the battles in Washington to something sweet and soothing right here at home, a local hospital kicking off a new program that uses volunteer cuddlers to help families in need. Now, while this looks adorable, our Paula Dutman explains it is also medically necessary. Okay, so I'm suited up because I'm in a hospital room with a very sick baby, and it's very important that I not get what she has, but also that I not pass anything that I have onto this fragile little baby. However, I can tell you that no matter how sick she is, she needs to be cuddled. And that's why suiting up to be a volunteer cuddler is serious business and important work. At the Children's Hospital of Michigan, there are 228 beds. Right now, 223 of those beds are occupied by precious children, sometimes fighting really bad stuff. The human touch has been scientifically proven to help babies thrive. When there's human to human touch, um, babies leave the hospital earlier. They have improved weight gain, which is so important in the neonatal intensive care unit. Um, and they have better human interactions in the future. Baby Melanie is really sick. Just to enter her hospital space requires suiting up in sterile gear. The cuddlers are fearless oh, and giving of themselves. Happy to give mom a little break. They here to do this for me. That's good, I love them. They're very, they're very handy. <laughs> Very handy. Cuddler programs aren't new, but this one is fairly new to Children's oh. Hospital. Danielle Carmanos volunteered her star power. When her own son was hospitalized and during an overnight stay, she realized not all babies had someone who could stay with them. Um, I think the feeling of your, in your heart, as silly as it sounds, that feeling of a baby just needs comforting. That takes over and that overshadows everything. What's developed in the last month of the cuddler program is real dedication and a real difference as many of the cuddlers check in at all different hours and schedule themselves as if they're being paid and they aren't. Well, actually, they are. But the currency is more valuable than money. Giggles, smiles, cooing, and an occasional appreciative there, gurgle. Lots of, a lot of mom and dads aren't able to be here because they work or they have other children at home. So um, we're able to come here and cuddle the babies and they can still have that skin to skin contact which will help them heal up quicker and be happier kiddos. 
So here's the thing, it is a volunteer program, but it's not like you can just walk in and start coddling. Uh, you have to be very seriously vetted. You have to prove you are up to date with all of your vaccinations and you do have to go through some training. I do want to say they are, however, looking for cuddlers, including men, Karen, and you don't even have to look good in yellow. <laughs> of course, I'm going to put a link on my Facebook page, Local 4 Paula Tupman, just in case you want to go through the training and become a professional volunteer cuddler. What a wonderful program. We thank you so much, Paula. Thank you. Still ahead, a medical emergency on a school bus. Suddenly, the driver can not drive. We'll tell you who came to the rescue. We're also tracking a health crisis at the Winter Olympics, why hundreds of security guards are under quarantine. Up first, breaking news, the end of this rocket launch cliffhanger. After a series of delays, we will show you what happened just minutes ago. Stay right here for the video. Coming up all new on Local 4 News at 5 and 6. You are looking live at Ford Field, but there's no game today. Uh-uh, just a bunch of kids here today learning something much more important, how to improve their relationship with police. Breaking news, that was the first test launch of the SpaceX Falcon Heavy rocket launching into space just about 20 minutes ago. The rocket is unique because of its use of reusable technology. Two of the three boosters it uses will land only a couple miles away from where it launched, and the third will land on a drone ship. The goal is to one day send two regular people into space, but for now, its cargo was a Tesla Roadster in cherry red. First at four, we're also tracking other stories making headlines around the world. We will start with a deadly earthquake in Taiwan. So far, at least two people are dead and more than 140 injured. The 6.4 magnitude quake hits the eastern coast of Taiwan, and you can see one hotel actually leaning at a sharp angle, and the first two floors appear to be heavily damaged. The two victims who died were hotel employees. More people could be trapped inside. The quake hit just before midnight local time. Search teams from other areas are headed to the scene where the most damage occurred. Just days ahead of the opening ceremonies, more than 1,200 Olympic security guards have been quarantined. Officials say 36 people showed signs of the very contagious norovirus. They are hoping everyone can be isolated until they can confirm the virus is not spreading. The Korean Center for Disease Control and Prevention is working with the Olympic Committee to manage that situation. And our Olympic coverage starts Thursday night right here on Local 4. Jeopardy! will be on at 7, followed by the Olympic Zone with Devin Skillion, Kimberly Gill, and Bertie Smilovitz. Then primetime Olympic coverage, followed by Local 4 News at 11.30. The Olympic story starts Thursday night. I'm excited. I really I'm am getting excited. The, fever. the kids are excited just to learn about some of the sports, you know, you haven't That's true. seen. No one's too excited about the commute tomorrow morning. <laughs> well, you can either do it early or late or that's not at true. all. That's true. Maybe do some work from home if you can. Yes, that would definitely be a day to do it. Uh, so far, that snow is still well off to our southwest. We're going to see it move in here, but not until overnight. So we're going to get through the drive home with no problems. Uh, but there's going to be plenty of snow around as we get into tomorrow. So temperatures outside a little bit milder than what we saw yesterday. We're in the mid 20s and even though uh, there's some significantly cooler air out here where that snow is, a uh, number's not going to move all that much in the next seven days, at least in the nighttime or the uh, daytime hours for the daytime highs. We will see some slightly cooler morning lows as we go forward. So let's time out that snow again through the evening hours. We're going to be fine. Clouds will be on the increase and then about two, three in the morning. We'll start seeing the first bands of snow starting to work in here and they will intensify unfortunately during that morning commute by 9 a.m. we'll start seeing this wind down and by lunchtime that snow is going to be gone. There will be a few snow showers coming in the afternoon. You'll see these sort of streaming in from the northwest. Not going to add a ton to accumulations, maybe a couple more tents uh, at best, but generally most of what we're expecting for accumulating snow is going to happen during the morning commute. Then we'll be dry in the evening, uh, 10 o'clock temperature numbers uh, by Wednesday night, showing that there's not going to be a whole lot out there as far as precipitation goes. But don't worry, if you want more snow, it's going to be here on Friday and then again on Saturday. So we'll talk about those coming up. But here's a look at the totals that we're expecting for tomorrow morning. Metro zone numbers just right around two inches, some slightly higher totals here on the east side and downriver 2.5, 2.7 from the city 
south. Highest totals will be out in Lenawee County. That's where we expect three inch totals uh, to start showing up around Adrian, Tecumseh, Blissfield, slightly less out here in Monroe County. And then those numbers do slack off as you work your way to the north. Generally two to two and a half there, close to three in Manchester, but those numbers decrease up towards Genesee County. Flint, you'll be at 1.8. And in our north zone, again, those counties that are not in the advisory here, Lapeer, Sanilac, you're going to be at about an uh, inch and a half close to two, but there will be some two inch totals closer to M59 tomorrow morning. So otherwise, temperatures dropping to 16 tonight for an overnight low, very light northeast winds to go along with it. Then as we get into tomorrow, similar highs, mid 20s and mostly in that morning is what we're looking for for snow. The snow showers in the afternoon, pretty inconsequential as far as accumulation, although uh, just a little bit could be a headache for drivers for that drive home. Then as we get into Friday, this will probably be the highest snow totals that we see not high, not much higher than what we're expecting on Wednesday, but still a couple additional inches and then late Saturday into Sunday. That'll be our last burst of snow for the forecast, which would be plenty uh, for most folks over the next seven days. Karen. All right. Thank you very much, Ben. Still ahead. Have you seen the term Lady Doritos popping up on your social media today? Well, we have the backlash and the response from the company. A first school bus crisis with the driver suddenly out of commission. We will tell you what happened when a 13 year old took the wheel. First at four continues with the story of a school bus rescue after a seventh grader takes the wheel. 13 year old Carson Vega jumped into action in Texas when his bus driver suffered a medical emergency and could no longer drive. Five other students were also on board. Vega says he knew he had to do something. And we were about to go out, and then I was, I was like, no, I'm not dying. Sat on his lap, moved his hands and stuff, and then just drove. It could have been a very tragic situation, but uh, it turned out uh, better than you could ever imagine. Vegas says he couldn't safely stop the bus right away, so he drove for a couple miles to find a good place to pull over. The driver is now home from the hospital and is expected to recover. Okay, let's talk trending stories. Many of you are probably seeing the Lady Doritos story all over social media. Well, now PepsiCo is trying to stop the story from spreading any further. PepsiCo's female CEO recently said the company was thinking about launching snacks specifically designed for women, options that would crunch more quietly and fit into their purses. Well, that is not true, according to PepsiCo, but not before social media erupted with comments like, quote, my generation marched so future generations of women could enjoy Lady Doritos and go tell Sojourner Truth and Susan B. Anthony they can finally rest in peace. Now, we're not sure exactly what CEO made those comments, but again, the company says Lady Doritos are not a real thing. Don't worry about it talk about an uninvited guest. These photos come from a resident of Boca Raton, Florida, after she found an alligator in her pool. Janet Rosa found the eight foot gator Monday morning. She thinks it came from a nearby canal. Janet called local trappers who removed the alligator and hopefully returned it back into the wild. Still had a new leap ahead for robotic dogs. An engineer inspired by her father to create this new puppy, but we are not sure you are going to be flattered about it. We'll talk about it coming up. Meryl Davis and Charlie White skated into history as the first American ice dancers to win Olympic gold, and life hasn't stopped for Meryl since. There have been a lot of exciting things that have happened. A new role in Detroit. I didn't know how much it would affect me. So how is it going to feel watching from home this time? Hear about her fiance and the other new love in her life. It sounds ridiculous, but I feel like it's made me a better person. And we've put her to work for us. Getting to find new challenges and explore new territory that are a little bit scary. Catch up with Meryl Davis tonight at 11. It's easy to say. Finally, first at four, robotic pets keep getting more and more lifelike these we days. Want you, yeah, we want you to meet Hannah, who is a new robo dog, who comes with a sense of smell. Now, we're told a Japanese engineer came up with the idea because she was afraid to tell her father that his feet smelled. I guess she thought it would be easier to have the dog do the dirty work. The robot reacts to odors in three ways. With good smells, she rubs her feet. With bad odors, she acts like she's barking. And with the smell of two-day-old socks, she faints. <laughs> the dog costs $300. 300 bucks. I now, just see, think I would have better communication in my relationships <laughs> instead of creating a robot. I but. would. I hope that's not her dad. <laughs> I think it is. I don't know. Thanks so much for joining us for First at Four. We'll be back at a half hour with local four news at five.
Inside Edition is next.